According to research, in order for a culture to maintain itself for more than 25 years, there must be a fertility rate of 2.11 children per family. With anything less, the culture will decline. Historically, no culture has ever reversed a 1.9 fertility rate. A rate of 1.3, impossible to reverse. Because it would take 80 to 100 years to correct itself. And there is no economic model that can sustain a culture during that time. In other words, if two sets of parents each have one child, there are half as many children as parents. If those children have one child, then there are one-fourth as many grandchildren as grandparents. If only a million babies are born in 2006, it's hard to have two million adults enter the workforce in 2026. As the population shrinks, so does the culture. As of 2007, the fertility rate in France was 1.8, England 1.6, Greece 1.3, Germany 1.3 Italy 1.2 Spain 1.1 Across the entire European Union of 31 countries the fertility is a mere 1.38 Historical research tells us these numbers are impossible to reverse In a matter of years Europe as we know it will cease to exist Yet the population of Europe is not declining. Why? Immigration. Islamic immigration. Of all population growth in Europe since 1990, 90% has been Islamic immigration. France, 1.8 children per family. Muslims, 8.1. In southern France, traditionally one of the most populated church regions in the world, there are now more mosques than churches. 30% of children ages 20 and younger are Islamic. In the larger cities such as Nice, Marseille and Paris, that number has grown to 45%. By 2027, one in five Frenchmen will be Muslim. In just 39 years, France will be an Islamic Republic. In the last 30 years, the Muslim population of Great Britain rose from 82,000 to 2.5 million, a 30-fold increase. There are over 1,000 mosques, many of them former churches. In the Netherlands, 50% of all newborns are Muslim. And in only 15 years, half of the population of the Netherlands will be Muslim. In Russia, there are over 23 million Muslims. That's one out of five Russians. 40% of the entire Russian army will be Islamic in just a few short years. Currently in Belgium, 25% of the population and 50% of all newborns are Muslim. The government of Belgium has stated one-third of all European children will be born to Muslim families by 2025 just 17 years away. The German government, the first to talk about this publicly, recently released a statement saying, the fall in the German population can no longer be stopped. Its downward spiral is no longer reversible. It will be a Muslim state by the year 2050. Muammar al-Qaddafi of Libya said, there are signs that Allah will grant victory to Islam in Europe without swords, without guns, without conquest. We don't need terrorists. We don't need homicide bombers. The 50 plus million Muslims in Europe will turn it into a Muslim continent within a few decades. There are currently 52 million Muslims in Europe. The German government said that number is expected to double in the next 20 years to 104 million. Closer to home, the numbers tell a similar story. Right now, Canada's fertility rate is 1.6, nearly a full point below what is required to sustain a culture. And Islam is now the fastest growing religion. 
Between 2001 and 2006, Canada's population increased by 1.6 million, 1.2 of those immigration. In the United States, the current fertility rate of American citizens is 1.6. With the influx of the Latino nations, the rate increases to 2.11, the bare minimum required to sustain a culture. In 1970, there were 100,000 Muslims in America. Today, there are over 9 million. The world is changing. Well, many people turned to religion to help them cope in the days after the 9-11 attacks, and some even chose new faiths, including Islam. That may be no surprise, since a quarter of the estimated 6 million Muslims in the United States are converts. Delia Gallagher looks at two people who chose that path. Alison Poole says this phrase three times in Arabic, and then in English. There is no God. But God. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is the messenger of God. Is the messenger of God. And her conversion ceremony is complete. She's now a Muslim. Moments later, she'll marry Sammy and become Alison El Gamal. But Allison, who was raised a Southern Baptist in North Carolina, says faith, not marriage, made her want to become a Muslim. I think for a long time I've been looking for something. I've, there, there's been like a piece missing. Always one little thing that maybe wasn't right. At a ceremony marking the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, she explained why Islam appeals to her. I think because it's much more about peace. I'm praying five times a day. It's kind of hard to go out and say bad things or do bad things when you're praying five times a day. I have to believe. The Imam who married Allison says he's seen more American converts recently, in part because of the prominence of Islam in the news. It may sound paradoxical, but what happens is that when something becomes more in the news, people tend to want to know about it. Allison says she was already on a spiritual quest when she began to hear a lot about Islam post 9-11. Barbara Cardebuke, another recent Muslim convert, says 9-11 also played a part in her conversion. After 9-11, I thought this is the time when people really have to start looking for real answers to get away from everybody fighting back and more. You have to start looking towards God. Barbara says through Islam she found a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God she was unable to find as a Roman Catholic. I always felt when you go to church you're praying to Jesus or you're doing Hail Marys. You, you're not, I used to think, well, where's God? She says her family has been mostly supportive of her conversion. Allison says her family is completely behind her decision, but occasionally she's reminded that not everyone is. I was walking around down near the World Trade Center, and this woman walked by and she said, I want to just go bomb those Muslim bastards. And I heard her say it, and it just, it really struck me, because I was like, you know what, you know, that that's me. You know, this is something that's, that's brought me a peace that I've never known. And, and it's still so misunderstood. It's a choice she's proud of and says she'll keep for life. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين